welcome to Quark Talk on Think Tech. I'm Crystal, and today we have a very dry topic. I'm sorry to say that, and you know what? You guys are probably wanting to change the channel because this topic is something you don't want to go to. But we have to talk about it because everyone, every woman goes through it, and men, you got to deal with your partners going through it. So it all has to deal with you. So come on and join us. We've got a great guest today. We're going to be talking about menopause and sexuality. That's right, menopause. That <laughs> nice, juicy topic. I told you, it's not going to be that bad. So let's introduce our wonderful guest today. We've got here Dr. Joy, Diana Joy Ostroff, a naturopathic doctor, is that right? That's right. Trained in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Wow, mm -hmm. you got a full stuff on your plate. So doctor. <laughs> Give us a little scoop of uh, what you do and what that means first. Hi, Crystal. Um, well, what do I do? I'm a naturopathic physician. That means I help women, men, and children get healthy, feel the best they can be. Uh, they, uh, people who are aspiring toward optimal wellness and feeling better than they already do and feeling and, and those who aspire to just have the kind of vitality and physical, mental and emotional stamina that they had when they were children or maybe that they never had yet, mm -hmm. but that they realize that it, it, it is possible to feel better and those who want to reach those levels I work with. Okay, well that's mm. a very good um, thing then because uh, menopause is the point in life where a lot of women, most women, feel like it's the lowest point in their life, that transition where they dry up and they feel like, you know, symbolically they can't pr produce, they can't have kids anymore and, and psychologically and physiologically there's so many things that just cut off. So many things. Actually, you know, the time when women naturally start to decline in age is 35. Oh, great. So there is, you know, in the olden days, 50 was old age. Right, right. So 35, at 35 years old, we're already starting to um, lose our bones, our bone strength. We're already starting to lose our hormones. Yeah. Uh, where there's a natural declination whereby we don't quite feel the same, it, and it gets a progressively more intense as we get older so yeah. all women are aware of that it's happening when it's happening and it's a time to reach out for support because yeah. there is support to be had and right. it's important that women know that there is support. Now there are lots of different scenarios though you've got women who complain you know the the extremes uh, 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 you can go through all I mean I think most people know what the, the natural or the obvious signs are of, of hot flashes and, and all these different um, emotional changes. But what are some uh, symptoms that directly affect your sexual health? So basically during menopause, the vaginal walls start to thin. Yeah. And, and there's less lubrication naturally. Right. So uh, it becomes a more of a discomfort to have intercourse and uh, it takes a very mature man and, and conversation having with your partner to um, understand that these changes are real for women and, and oftentimes a man might feel rejected and what really needs to happen is, is communication about it and understanding that this is a time where a woman needs even more TLC yeah. in terms of um, being gentle, being deliberate, being a little bit more slow, maybe experimenting with new things that aren't the same as some of the intercourse You mean techniques. new positions? Or yeah, it could be new, new positions, props? it could be new props, it could be new lubricants. Right. It could be... When you say new, like different types, I mean, I don't even know what's well, out there now. Well, okay, so for instance, <laughs> you know, a lot of women are experimenting with um, over-the-counter lubri right. lubricants. Yeah. There are some that are actually bioidentical that help uh, bring out some of the um, estriol and estradiol that's, that's lost. Uh -huh. uh, these can be inserted um, vaginally or topically. Um, sometimes you can rub a bioidentical cream on the wrist. Oh, and, um, like a patch? It, no, it's not a oh. patch, it's actually a cream. Um, or you can insert something. And the, what we want to make sure is that it's compatible to the woman's body and that there are no side effects. There are some of the estrogens right. That, that are being dispensed um, through gynecologists whereby they may have 
there may be side effects that mm. occur later on. So we want to stay away from some of the estrogen compounds right. and maybe go more toward the bioidentical or bio even herbal. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you. They're, I mean, they're, they're so organic types of lubricants. Have you ever seen that uh, drama co comedy called... Uh, Gracie or Frankie and Gracie. I have. It's on Netflix. I yet. It's got uh, Lily Tomlin and uh, Jane Fonda. Yes, Watch I have, it. I've heard of it. Because really? there's this one episode <laughs> where Lily Tomlin is this kind of pot smoking, older <laughs> kind of hippie, but she's discovered this natural product. She uses these something from the farm and she creates her own lubricants. And now they want to like package it and put it out there. So Great idea. Does it, is it? Is there other something there, like there, that? I'm the sure there are very, yeah, there are lots of them. Um, that you, they can be made with beeswax or calendula oh, or vitamin right. E. Um, you know, you want to make sure that they smell good and yeah. hope, hopefully they're pal pal palatively tasty. Yes, because oh. in case we want to um, <laughs> explore different avenues, we're hoping that that becomes um, more of a prevalent part of intercourse as time goes on because, right. you know, again, the extra lubrication does a woman a lot of good. Yeah. And can and bring know, about a lot of pleasure. When you say lubrication, I just thought of this uh, kind of uh, an analogy because when I was in Hong Kong I interviewed this Chinese uh, uh, OBGYN and she said because Chinese don't talk about this stuff but she was encouraging women who had menopause to lubricate naturally even if they don't have sex just to keep it active or I don't know that's right is well that right? use it or lose it is right. the old that's saying, saying right so you know one problem that I see is that the men are starting to in in uh, want to do the Viagras and the things that are artificially giving them more stamina right. because they're also using losing their vigor right. and vitality and w women you know think about the word men yeah pause yeah. Right? So it, there's this part of a woman, she, her, the kids are typically out of the home, and it's finally a chance for a woman to just be like, oh, I have time, <laughs> I have time to myself, My what can empty. I do? And sometimes the woman needs that space, like sometimes women don't even want to make dinner during right. that period of time. They just want time to do what they haven't had a chance to do because they were sex. running children around. They want sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, if could they have be. a partner. That's right they might want sex or they might want to do some other things okay. they might want to explore some other um, areas in their life where they just haven't yes. had the opportunity yes. to do so right. so you know g giving the woman and giving ourselves that time to just reflect and say what do we what do I really want to do right. what do I really want to do and then indulge and try different things a lot of times my patients you know we're, we'll talk about oh yeah I want to do a whole look but I'm scared right. or I want to sure. I go to yoga, but I'm scared I'm not flexible enough. And and I encourage my women, just go do one class. So that's you the know? time. That's the time. Go do the things that you've let go over. Like for us, we go back oh, yeah, to ballet Oh, yeah, I didn't say class. that. You know, Diana and I <laughs> take ballet and yoga mm. together sometimes. So, yes, you're right. But um, so basically you're saying menopause isn't really a pause in your life and it's not a drying up really it's an opening of opportunities where it forces you to explore new options it will it doesn't force you but if you don't do you it you're gonna you, most women you feel unfulfilled ah, right okay. so there's an unfulfillment that will happen because it's empty nest syndrome so drying up metaphorically it's metaphorically but it's also physiologically okay so we want to prevent the drying up with um, the herbal or the the natural uh, lubricants are there or Supplements you can there take are that definitely make it worse. supplements. Okay, come on. Yes, simisifuga, rasamosa, diascorea, chaste tree. There's a variety of. Um, can you get these tonic. over the counter? Well, or? you can, but they're not as good of quality. So when someone comes to me, they're yeah. going to get the the best quality of organic, natural, herbal suppositories or natural remedies, whether it's a tincture or a, ca a capsule mm -hmm. or um, some kind of a powder or fresh herb that's going to match what their body actually needs because right. every woman is so unique and right. different. So some, whereas some women might get dry, the other women might have hot flashes. Right. Some have sleeplessness, some have emotional where they're drained or they feel just lethargic or tired or they're gaining too much weight. So each uh -huh. woman needs to be addressed in a very unique Individual. way what's going to be, what's going to help them the most. So, you know, having the proper testing equipment to assess what's going on, taking 
make getting the proper lab diag diagnosis oh. so that we find out what all's going on with the health, even right. in terms of cardiac health, okay. in terms of um, uh, preventing other risks of other health oh, issues related. like osteoporosis, yeah. that, that if it's not attended to proactively, it's going to show up later because of the natural uh, degradation of bone over time. So we want to address the woman in uh, ourselves in all ways. We want to not forget that we also, our brain needs to be nourished. As Absolutely. estrogen starts to wane, so does the, the um, estrogenic effects that are uh, supporting brain tend to also decline. So by letting all that natural um, hormonal balance just disintegrate, we're doing ourselves not only harm uh, physiologically in terms of sex and, and the repro mm. well, we don't reproduce anymore, but in terms of our brain health, our bone health, our cardiovascular health. So we need to think, uh, think holistically about how this menopause is affecting us and do what we can do to counter interact the, the deal right. I mean effects. there's so many different areas we can go into but would you encourage or suggest women if they had kind of like a low point in life to go out there and do things they've never done before I mean I'm talking uh, sexually though even if they have been prudish in the past do you think that something like that might increase the you know the benefits um, in terms of, you know, you know how men, middle-aged men, always get a younger woman just to keep them alive and make them feel young again. Does that work the same way for women? Sometimes. <laughs> I think that if a woman feels like she's being neglected or, or not valued for who she is and right. she's keeping up her um, herself and sometimes a woman may want to, want to experience feeling that just to that to feeling those. loved and feeling sure. the pleasure that they're not receiving. Right. So I think it works both ways. Yeah, I think so too. And people again, it's it's almost shameful for women to talk about that, but for men, it's like it's it's a given that they need that to keep them feeling young. Yeah, you know what I, I mean. Think, again, it's, it's an individual a... thing, but I I I think you're right. Yeah, I think you may now, be right. Now, girls tend to get their periods younger and younger now. Uh, you know, whether it's the hormones or I don't know what it is in the air, but that's a fact. Does that mean that women will tend to get their menopause earlier too? Sometimes that does happen. So we have to remember uh, a lot of the chemicals, the artificially induced hormones that are being injected into the animals yes. that we're consuming, are causing estrogen changes in women and in boys, in young right. boys. So boys are even developing breasts at an early age and then uh, be, because of the hormones yeah. uh, um, in the wow. meat and in the milk uh, <laughs> of cows and of, of right. chicken. So uh, the hormonal effects are vast. Wow, okay. And yes. Diana, I'm, uh, I'm glad you brought up boys because I think what I think we should do is to spin it. We'll take a quick break when we come back is to talk about the male aspect and how men and young men and boys should perceive and embrace and know about menopause because we all go through this together. So we'll come back and we'll talk more about that. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show. You can watch the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Honolulu time and enjoy how to be inspired and empowered. If you're a woman or girl, everyone is welcome, but it's really dedicated to you. And we look forward to seeing you. You can also find us on thinktechhawaii.com. See you soon. Aloha. Hello, and I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me for Global Connections every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we talk with a variety of guests about various international uh, issues, historical issues, both here in Hawaii and abroad, range from security, human rights, ethics, and all sorts of other things. So please join me. I look forward to talking with you and seeing some of my guests. Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu, and I am the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and we are live with you every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. And our show focuses on Hawaii's local food uh, community. We feature not only the farmers that are producing our food, but we also feature the supporters and other folks involved in the community that are trying to promote local agriculture. 
Welcome back to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here with Dr. Diana Joy Ostroff talking about menopause and sexuality. Now, we mentioned all about the women and the symptoms and the attitudes, but let's talk about the boys and the men. How many boys and men out there really know what menopause is and how supportive and how do you support and your attitudes towards this kind of a life-changing transition? Diana, what's your take on that? You I, have a son. I How do. do you I tell have them about sons, that? but I don't. I don't bring them into the conversation of menopause. I, I think that young boys that are teen, I have teens, mm -hmm. and they're not. They don't need to know. They're not interested. I think that um, having conversations with boys about, um, you know, maybe mommy needs a little break. Mm -hmm. Maybe mommy would really appreciate if you cook dinner, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep your chores done so that I don't have to be on you. And um, I think that we don't need to get our teen or young young boys in, in the conversation at all. I think it's a, something that we need to handle. And, um, but I, in terms of men mm -hmm. and husbands uh, and partners, I think that having that conversation mm. is very, very important. Right. Um, as we're going through these changes and even our, our emotional states start to shift mm. and we may not be, uh, we, there may be some irritation or mm. a, a, angst, mm. um, maybe some emotional changes that need to be understood. I think it's because, you know, women were going through the change, we need to be the ones to communicate. And well, to but that's what I mean by communicating is, is there ever, is it ever too early to do that because I have two boys too and I feel like sometimes um, it's not a bad thing to mention it and that 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 they know that this this ultimately happens with a woman and they should because I feel like a lot of men I'm not trying to stereotype but you know a lot of people go through oh yeah oh if she's got a period so she's moody you know and then then, then the boys or the kids th hear that from the parents and then they had that same attitude growing up and there's this mis conception or this this attitude like oh yeah that's why she's so bitchy or you know and I hate that and I think that if boys and men had a way of learning that this is a kind of a process in their body that affects them that they not, not necessarily can control it might help with the family you know dynamics. I think that, that that's probably very very probable I um I didn't go through that bitchiness. I think I had resolved okay, my PMS so by then. Well, I took care of my PMS early in life, and that's oh, one okay. of the main things that I was adamant about resolving why I got into the field I got into, because um, periods and PMS was very difficult for mm. me, as well as so many other health issues. So I resolved mine before I had my children. I had my two children in my 40s. So you didn't so dry up, really? I you didn't did have not like that. have that conversation. I did not need to explain to my children why I was moody. Oh, okay. Because I wasn't moody at that time right. anymore. I right. had already, you know, overcome those those emotions. And no, I haven't had to have that kind of conversation with okay. my children, okay. um, my partner, absolutely. Um, because yes, things do change a little bit. And, um, and now again, because I'm a naturopath and I I assist my own body into restoring its function to the fullest. Yeah. I'm not experiencing the same level of symptoms as my patients. Right. Are. So that's why I say, you know, anybody who's interested in avo avoiding some of those emotions and feelings and physiological changes do should seek some support and assistance with a good naturopathic doctor um, or acupuncturist or even the medical doctor who uh, explain who can assist in right. that area. Um, as far as the conversations, yes, we do need to share with our partners what's going on so that they can help us and be compassionate and supportive and mature enough to understand. Just like when we're nursing babies, right. we're not it's as not interested you. You're as not like having, a... having that um, male-female bonding as much as the woman really needs to bond with her baby at yeah. that time. Right. So that, I think that 
uh, in those formative years when a woman's nursing a baby, there's also issues that men have to look at sure. and, and be like, wow, my, my wife seems to not need me so anymore. much she anymore. Want, right. And the man does need to be... So you need to talk about it. That's right. He does need you to. Know, and then flipping it back to the women's side again is that psychosocial aspect that you did mention earlier. It, it's really, you know, we, we focus so much on the drying up or the hormonal changes in our body, but so much is up here that affects down there. That's, that's right. But you know, when you're young, and, and can I use the word horny? You know, older people don't associate women being horny, but it can be. So when you're young and horny, you can get moist. But when you're old and you, you dried up, do you, do you lack those fluids that you need to? It's not or, as easy, is it? But you can still, you have that sexual desire. It has to be brought it's, on. It's from here. It you has, know, women yes, are all that's true. cerebral, Sex right? Sex starts in the brain. That's right. Right. So there has to be that desire. The woman has to des decide, you know what? I love my man so much that I'm going to get myself in the mood and I'm going to let him help me get in the mood. Okay. And, you know, there's the other phenomenon. A lot of women are working now. Right. And it takes a, a very... Uh, in, a thoughtful shift to yeah. go from being at work then to come home sure. making dinner oh, God, cleaning up yeah. the mess uh -huh. and then having to get in the mood before you want to fall asleep you're so tired right. <laughs> there has to be that time we have to give ourselves that time yes. you know at least 20 minutes in the tub with bubbles with oh, candles man, I wish I and had that. you know and just to be able to relax and right. be with us because yeah. to go from all that demand at yeah. work and then all that demand at home and then feel like we need to be there for someone else well it's not realistic you're and, right. and it's not really, um, I don't know You're that. exhausted. You're so depleted it, of energy. Yeah, that, so, yeah. so a woman needs to recognize, okay, it's really not about my, it's not my husband's fault. It's that I haven't given myself that mm. time to just really go inward, meditate. Mm. You know, I give myself acupuncture. I oh, lay really? down, wow. I take a nap. And, and you and do your classes. You do things, there's me well, time. I do that in the morning most of the time. And then, yeah, me time. So yeah. then I... You know, if, if, if I don't have me time, it's very hard to then go yeah. from giving, 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 and giving some more. Right. So, right. you know, how about taking that time to give, 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 and then me. Yeah. And then give a little bit again, or, or a lot if we can if muster we can. up that the energy, energy again. Going back to the natural energy. path, the healing so energy. It's, so it's, it's not only... It's not only energy, it's just, it's drive, it's feeling, it's wanting to even share love and share right. our best it's self. it's all connected. You know, and I, but I always say to my patients, let's, let's think about why you want to get healthy. Why, mm. is it about just you, you want to feel good, mm. it's indulging and, you know, that's, yeah, that comes first. You're but right. What's the purpose? Why do we want to get healthy? We want to give our best to the world. We want to be able to do our best with, with yeah. our children, with right. our mates, with our, you know, for me, my patients, you, for your clients. For We, we want to be able to give the best of ourselves. And we owe it to ourselves to take care of ourselves exactly. on such a deep level. And you need to do it to yourself before you can give That's it out. That's right. right. We really do. We need to learn how to love ourselves And, completely. you know, all these people out there who are maybe too young to experience where we are ads right now. Have you hit menopause yet? Oh, I'm 55 years old. Oh, okay. Old. Wow. <laughs> See? Amazing. See? It does work, these, this naturopathic healing. Now, um, I want to bring in Zuri, my buddy in the panel, because she's younger. Zuri, are you there? Yay. Zuri, how old are you anyway, you young chick? It's actually my birthday today. <gasps> I am 28 years old. Younger. Happy birthday. Everybody says hey. happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Now, Zuri, you listening to Dr. Diana and myself talking about menopause, and does that scare you? Do you dread menopause like a lot of younger women do? Like, oh, no, I don't want to dry up. It's so symbolic of the end of my fertility, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What's your take on it? Oh my God, I'm so scared. <laughs> now that I'm 28, everyone's talking to me about, you know, why aren't you pregnant? Why aren't you having babies? I'm like, I'm only 28. That's how I feel about it. So I'm starting to feel like, okay, what if I start drying up? And what if I can't have babies when I'm ready? Aha. Uh -huh. What do you think? I mean, that's such a typical response, right, to, to this concept. It's just a scary thought. Well, li this is my advice. Now, again, I, w I started being a naturopath when I was 28. 
and I had a lot of women that came to me and they were in menopause and I remember thinking to myself I do not want to go through that I do not want to be sweating I do not want to be having hot flashes and sleeping staying up all night and worrying and stressing so what I did is I took care of myself really fundamentally as I was going through my late 20s and 30s and 40s okay so that I when I finally reached menopausal time I just I cruised just cruised because you were I but had were you already busy with things and of course I'll, I was busy that, I mean, but I was I was uh, taking care of my health right you're and always I conscious of what you're always eating and taking exercising. care of my health always balancing the imbalances always restoring uh -huh. so that I I don't let myself go so far down no if extremes I, if I notice that something doesn't feel right I tend to it right away I don't wait right. until it's lingering for three weeks or a month and that's what I encourage my women like how bad do you need to feel? How mm. bad do you need to feel before you're going to address it? So don't be passive. No, Just and also if you're having issues with periods or if you're yeah. having issues with pain or stomach aches or bloating, yeah. this is the body's signs right. and symptoms are there for a purpose. They're trying to assist us in paying attention, yeah. which we're ordinarily not. But all of a sudden, if we have a pain, we'll, we'll say, oh, something's wrong. We'll attend to it. Well, the same with, with every other aspect the period pains right. or bloating pains or headache pains and, why and bringing back the men again is that when you if you have a partner or family as you you share these things with them so they understand like oh she has these pains or why is she going through this so then it's all kind of out there on the mm, table mm, right yeah yeah and you know going back to the beginning because before we wrap up is the idea of the lubricants I just remembered <laughs> I saw this okay I've been watching these really bad shows on Netflix but there's this one Ali Wong is this comedian, this Asian comedian who's really obnoxious and crude in her sexual, um, you know, jokes. But she did mention that because she's 33 now, but before, Zuri, maybe you might kind of uh, uh, relate to this, is when you're young and you're, you're sexually active, you can be so moist and it's just the fluids just come gushing like you don't need any help. Is that right, Zuri? You still there? Oh, uh -huh, right. man, sister. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's yes, like everything. She was so graphic. She said that you could like have your hands stick. Like it, it was like it's. What do you call that? For Jessica? Spin bar What's bar cat it? mucus. So. <laughs> she said, "Man, you can blow bubbles with it." And, but she's so afraid of drying up. And this is our biggest thing with menopause. It's like how do we lubricate our bodies in, in a physical sense, but in an emotional sense and a and a spiritual sense? How do we do that? Well, number one, we need to hydrate. Okay, uh, so very good. you know, part of drying up is being dehydrated. So hydration is um, something that we need to attend to all the time. It takes six months to hydrate your body if you're starting from a dehydrated place. If you're thirsty, you're dehydrated. If your lips are dry, you're dehydrated. If your tongue is dry, you're dehydrated. If your skin is dry. So rather than lather up on, on moisturizers, we need to lubricate from inside. That's one thing we can do to prevent. Okay. Um, you know, things like chicken. Chicken is a very heating That's food. That's a Chinese thing, isn't it? Yeah. Chicken yeah, is a heating food. Cheap. So if we're eating heating foods, we're going to have hot flashes more so than if we're not eating heating foods. So to keep cool, we want to cool our bodies down. Also, eating foods that are more rich in enzymes is going to assist us in, in keeping our natural lubrication. Like keeping papaya, our and papaya and cucumber and celery and anything that's, that's um, from earth from the earth, okay. anything that's um, just uh, uh, fruits, vegetables, sprouts, seeds, the, the things that are Give naturally you. on our planet, those add to our enzyme, our enzymes so that we don't have to use up our enzymes to do bodily functions. Right. So the more that we can um, create an internal environment that, nur that nourishes Keeping okay. the, the cells alive right. and healthy. We Diana, can do for you ourselves. know, you put so much onto the table. I'm sorry we're out of time, but thank you so much. But uh, folks, remember all those wonderful tips that Diana gave us today. And remember to lubricate yourself, lubricate your brain, your mind, your body, and just enjoy everything, okay? That's all for us today, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for tuning in.